Hello everyone, it's Kine and welcome back to another installment of 31 Days of Halloween, which is a new makeup tutorial every day of October, so subscribe so you don't miss out. Today's look is this two-in-one gothic glam with a reveal to this exposed brain inspired by the drag queen Van Der Van Ad. You don't have to do both at the same time if you like one better than the other. Obviously, I just like being dramatic, but here is a full list of everything you're going to need. And we're going to start by creating the brain mold, but skip to this time frame if you just want to see the gothic glam makeup. You're going to take a mixture of unflavored gelatin powder, water, and glycerin. I ended up using three small packets of gelatin, which measured to about three tablespoons. And then however much gelatin you use, you're going to add the same volume of water and glycerin. And the glycerin is just there to help it be more like elastic, but it's not really necessary. And then you're going to mix it and microwave it for about 10 to 15 seconds at a time. Microwave it for too long and then it's going to boil, which will ruin the formula, so do a little at a time until it's gooey and runny like this. Then I added some food coloring to dye it the color of a brain. I started with red to make it pink, but I wanted it to be more realistic, so I added some yellow and like a drop of green to make it more like this orangey brown flesh color. I got this brain mold from the dollar store, but it's actually like what inspired me to do this look, and I'm pouring the mixture in. Since I didn't make that much, it doesn't really cover that much area as you can see. So what I did was I swirled it around in the bowl so it would coat more of the walls in the mold, and I kept swirling it slowly until it dried. If I just let it sit there, all the gelatin would drip down to the bottom center of the mold, but this way I'm forcing it to dry on the walls so the brain is larger. Shouldn't really take that long until the gelatin stops running so much and cools down to the point where it's thick and doesn't move, at which point you're gonna pop it into the fridge so it cools quickly before it can settle down to the bottom again. When it's cooled down, you can peel it off, and the great thing about using gelatin as opposed to latex or clay is that it dries shiny and glossy, whereas if you made this with Play-Doh or like liquid latex, it would dry matte and look more fake. So set your new brain aside, because now we're gonna do the makeup. Start by applying a plastic bald cap. Again, I got this at the dollar store, which I do not recommend, by the way. It was so weak and would like rip at the ears, but I mean, that's what I get for being cheap. I'm securing it down using spirit gum, applying it to the skin and then tapping it until it becomes tacky and sticky, at which point I'm securing down the bald cap. And cut a slit for your ears and then secure the sideburns down too. Next, I'm going to take the gelatin brain we created and I'm placing the top of it on my head. I'm not gluing it all down since I'm going to be putting latex on the side, so just position it however you want. And then take latex and cotton and create a kind of barrier all along the edge of the brain. We want to make it look like the brain is not just sitting on our head, but rather it's underneath our skin. So the latex and cotton is going to serve as an extension of our skin that just has like a huge gaping hole in it. So I take a strip of cotton and dip it in latex and place it on the edge. If some of it is still dry, I saturate it with more latex using my small spatula. It's definitely slower than just using a big wedge sponge and stippling latex everywhere, but this way I think I have more control. And as it's drying, you're going to blend the edge into the skin just by like flattening it out. And then the edge that's facing the brain, you kind of want to lift up so the skin is raised there. If you're going out like this, you'll probably want a friend to help you with the back of your head. So now I'm going to start with a glam makeup while I wait for that to dry. And I'm going to start by gluing down the brows with spirit gum. Only because I'm doing like drag makeup so I want to change my brows. But you don't have to do this. Um, next I'm taking my base color and putting it all over my face. Including the exposed bald cap so it's all one color. Next, I'm going to highlight my brow bone. So there's a template for where to draw the brows. And I'm just using white cream paint for this and then using the same white to highlight underneath my eyes in a triangle. Blend the under eye highlight as well as the bottom edge of the brow bone highlight and then set everything with a translucent powder, including the bald cap so the foundation doesn't smudge. I'm then adding contours and dimensions and shadows using a brown matte bronzer and contouring the typical areas, the cheekbone and the temple and jawline and nose. Usually we blend our contours into the hairline, but since we're bald, you know, we're just going to take the contour past our hairline and into the bald cap. And then we also contour the nose. And I like to use the edge of a flat shadow brush. This one is by Luxie. It's soft, easy to wash and synthetic, so it doesn't fray. It's my favorite brush. I'm using the same exact powder I contoured with and I'm blending it through my eye socket. A good matte bronzer is really very versatile. You could use it for eyeshadow, bronzing, contouring. I think everyone should have one. 
Um, but after I've blended that into the crease, I'm going to apply black all over the lid so that it meets with the brown. And then I'm going to diffuse these together by using the brown that's on my brush. If I blended it with black on the brush, the crease would look muddy and patchy. It's always best to blend using a lighter color. Like for example, if I'm blending dark brown with a light brown, I would use a brush that has light brown on it. And in this case, I'm blending black and brown, so I use the brush with dark brown. And I repeat the same procedure on my lower lash line. When everything's almost done with the eyeshadow, I like to go in with the final layer of transition color. This is Makeup Geek's Creme Brulee eyeshadow. And it makes the blending look more soft and adds some warmth to those cool dark browns and blacks. Then I'm taking the stark white eyeshadow and I'm reintroducing the highlight that's on my brow bone. Just because all those smoky browns and blacks have kind of swallowed up the area and we want some light and brightness. And then I'm creating the eyebrows using brown eyeshadow. Off camera, I added contacts and lashes, and I also added black to the waterline for like a more sultry and smoky look. And I've decided to add this plum blush to the cheeks. This is the color Sin from NARS. I was feeling like the look was missing some color, and I think a cool purple blue toned blush matches the cold eyes and the black lips well. Speaking of black lips, this is NYX's Liquid Suede in the color Alien. And now the makeup is done, and I'm gonna paint the brain. Taking some of my foundation color first and then filling in those white spots. Even though we're gonna put like a ton of blood here, I'm doing this first so that if I miss any spots with blood, you at least see some skin color and not the white of the latex. Then I'm taking some red water activated face paint as well as some black and I'm adding this all along like the edges of the brain as well as in that ridge in the center and in the deeper wrinkles so that the brain has some dimension to it. Because in some lights it can just look like it's one flat color since it's made of one flat color. It's very easy to blend and sheer this out since it's water activated. I just applied it with a brush and softened it with a large wet sponge. If you ever put too much, it's also very easy to wipe it off just using a paper towel. Now I'm using fake blood, which I made from red food coloring and water and syrup, and I'm putting this all along the border and letting it drip down my face. The advantage of this is that it looks more wet and glossy and thus more realistic than just using paint, but it will get your wig dirty if it's wet before you put on your hair. And with that said, this is the finished makeup. The wig is from Amazon and I made the flower crown myself with some dollar store flowers. It's always awkward to check out when I do a big haul, like I got a brain mold, like three bouquets of flowers, two bald caps, I got wig pins and hair rollers on that trip. I told the girl I did YouTube, but I think she just thought I was weird. It probably didn't help that I was trying on the brain mold and flowers on my head and taking pictures in the store. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, subscribe to my channel for more everyday back to school makeup tutorials just like this. Join me next time where I teach you new ways to attract dirty looks on the street. Bye!